61A, lecture number 11. Announcements. My first announcement is that I realized I left something out of an earlier video that I covered in live lecture, so I'm going to cover it right now. There are two kinds of numbers in Python, integers and floating point numbers. What floating point means is something that you'll learn in 61C, or you can look it up for yourself. But you need to know something about them, which is that they only keep track of finite precision, a fixed number of significant digits for each number. So if I say 0.3, it uh, evaluates to 0.3, but if I put a ton of threes here, it's going to truncate some of them. And that's not formatting. Those are actual numbers lost. So if instead I put some other numbers here, we were losing the precision, anything after these decimal places. And that means if I ask Python, is this equal to that, it's going to tell me, sure, as far as I know, because in my limited world of precision, those two numbers look the same. Now, it's not the case that you can't represent a really small number. That still only has one significant digit, and so we can represent it exactly. However, if we take that number and we add 1 to it, then we lose all the precision. Integers don't have this problem in Python. I can make an arbitrarily long integer, and it will still record all of the digits for me. Two functions you should know about for converting floating point numbers to integers are int and round. Round rounds to the nearest integer. Int reduces the value until you reach an integer. You can always go in the other direction as well, asking for the floating point value of an integer, and that's with the float function. All of these are built in, and you don't need to import them. Moving on to the regular announcements, homework four is due on Thursday. There's a homework party tonight in Corey Hall to help you out. And you should watch this video in order to learn about range and int. This is actually just a link to this video I'm making right now. The MAPS project is due next Thursday. You can get a bonus point for submission by Wednesday, and there's a project party Wednesday as well. And one more announcement, which isn't really relevant to you until you finish homework four, is that homework five is posted, and it's due next week as well. So next Tuesday, you have to finish a homework, and then next Thursday, you have to finish a project. That's going to be a busy week. Fortunately, this is not the largest project in the course by far, and this homework is pretty manageable as well. So I just put them on different days so that you can spread out your work, but make sure you get started on this work early. This is a point in the course where students often fall behind because work ramps up in their other courses or because they think they can chill out after the midterm. That's not a good idea. You should definitely start your assignments as soon as they are released.